Ricky Buntink, Buntinks against one of our local players. Actually, the owner of our store. The, the Coloniston in Turnhout. So on the right hand side you see Sepp van Deun. He's throwing 7 for the die roll. And a 7, so they have to roll it again to win the die roll. A 3 from Ricky and a 5 for Sepp. So Sepp is on the on the play. He's playing Antique Tezzeret. And Ricky, as we saw, he's on land. So maybe for most viewers, the Antique Desert isn't the most um, well known, known deck pick, yeah. um, we ever see. Um, the deck is playing um, the Desert Agent of Bolas, a car the Topter Foundries, the Antiquities War. That's a, a recently new card also from uh, Dominaria. Okay. So, yeah, from two sets ago actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he's playing some Ensnaring Bridges, Daretti, Crucible, Chalice, War of Inventions, Transmute Artifact, Force of Will, Baleful Strix. Um, I have no idea what the deck does. Uh, um, I've played yeah, against I know him. what the deck does, but... Yeah, I've played against and he makes a lot of tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. neat. So, but let's see what it uh, will give us against the, the Lens matchup. Yeah. Um, Mox Diamond, and Ancient Tomb, Tomb. and Ensnaring Bridge. So at this moment, this yeah. means um, no more Married Lights tokens that can attack. No, nope. that's over no. at this moment. I um, don't see Sep drawing twenty cards. So no, it's <laughs> no, pretty impossible. <laughs> so actually, after. Turn one of a uh, Sepp van Dunn, Ricky Buntings has only one way in his deck to kill, and that's with Punishing uh, Fire. Punishing Fire. Yeah. Yeah. So if we will see a Chalice on two at this moment, it's scooping time. Completely over for yeah. uh, Ricky Buntings, indeed. So okay. Sepp yeah. is. Uh, four. Two mana, he has an Academy Ruins in hand, so he can take artifacts from his graveyard back on top of his library. Uh, Ricky Buntix um, has the Exploration. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has a Wasteland lock already active. Yeah. This could be a problem for um, Seb Van Dunn. Yeah. He's only playing four basics. He's playing two islands and two swamps. Yeah. All the rest are non basic lands. Three, so for now, three it's mox diamonds. So yeah, that's uh, important as well. So but now he has academy ruins and a volcanic island on hand. I think he really needs to find some uh, fetch lands that he can search for basics or mox yeah. diamonds that he can pitch his non basic lands. Um, just to find some extra mana to cast some spells. Um, Ricky Bundick, he has the Loam online, he just stretched. Yep. Campbell, Crawfortation, Wasteland. All he wants to do at this moment probably is try to get as many lands in play as possible. Yeah. Um, he has some extra red cards, he's going to gamble, some kings alive yeah. for the Grove of the Burn Willows. Right. Chuk, gamble. Um, what do we think? Punishing Fire at yeah, this moment? Of course, yeah. He, can, he has yeah. the Grove. He goes past the Punishing Fire. Okay. Maybe he missed one. So that, Se that was the second one. one, so now he's searching for it's something yeah. else. Uh, it was a green card. Hmm. 
not sure. So Gamble, what does Gamble do? It's one red mana, it's a sorcery spell. You can search your library for any card, put it into your hand, and then you have to discard any card at random. Oh. oh. Maybe he had the Punishing Fire in hand. <laughs> yeah. Therefore he didn't have to go for... Uh... Okay. Uh, he did take the mana bond, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Now we can drop all his lands at once. At the end of If he wants, but... Not sure that's very relevant at this moment. Maybe it is. A Riftstone Portal. Uh, it taps for a colorless mana. And when it's in your graveyard, all your lands can tap for one green or one white mana, normally. Okay. So this actually looked pretty good for Seb Van Dunn in turn one. Yeah. For Ancient Tomb, Mox Diamond, Pigeon Land, and going to for a Snaring Bridge. But now it looks completely different at yeah. this moment. He really needs to do something. He found a chance. Or he's thinking about playing a land and dropping Chalice of One. I'm not sure if that's good enough. Yeah. So it only stops gamble and crop rotation. Yeah. It's weird. Mm -hmm. no. stage, he copies the Grove of the Burn Willows. Now he has two groves. Uh, and uh, then he can start with uh, taking the Punishing Fires back and casting them. Yeah. Because that's the kill. That's the line yeah, he needs to follow at this moment. Yeah. I think Seb is writing it down. <laughs> Congratulations. Nice. We already know. Yeah, but that's... That's how that's it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah, indeed. As you can see now, the white paper, if you don't show us on the camera, it's very hard for us to see yeah. uh, what's written out. Normally there's some ink marker on the table. So, wasteland can. So I only I see only one solution um, for Seb to win this match at this moment, and it's drawing all his basics yeah. in a row. That's one. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. But maybe even there, Ricky Buntings has a solution for. Is there n no land that? Says you can destroy a basic land. Uh, Ghost Carter. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. two of those. Uh, no, so maybe if you can find another rift of portal, portal is in the graveyard. So I'll land step for one white and one green mana. So, but this is yeah. a little bit of no game for uh, Set Van Dunn. No. The only line he can take at this moment is playing Chalison 2. That would close the game um, for Set at this yeah. moment. Yeah. I'm not really sure why um, yep. Set casted the Chalison 1. Mm -hmm. There was already an exploration on the battlefield and all the one drops. Of Ricky are not really relevant anymore no, no. at this moment, so not 100% sure why he did it. I think it would be better to keep the cellos on hand, hoping that you could find. Oh, look, there is a cellos on the battlefield. What will Stefan do, do with this? Yeah. <laughs> it should be countered. Yeah, don't have to read it. Yeah, you can read it to make sure, but yeah, it's countered. <laughs> and it's countered by cellos. So now if he... 
But what can he play? Has he anything yeah. in his deck that he can play at this moment? Maybe a land and then uh, a Crucible of Worlds? Yeah. But he also so has he can bring uh, in every time uh, land three Signets. Oh yeah, indeed, the Signet. That so, costs two okay. mana, then you have to pay one mana, and then you can get two mana out of it. And a Demir yeah. sig Signet, it's one colorless that you have to put in, or, or a blue or a black. You get the blue and the black out of yeah, it. It's a yeah. colorless. It's a colorless that you yeah. can put in. Yeah. So maybe he's hoping for that. So. So at this moment, it's not the most interesting game <laughs> we have seen today. So this is, these are the plays that we're going to see over and over again, yeah, yeah. all this much until uh, one of the players die at this moment. Um, Ricky has to cast a lot of Punishing Fires. Yeah. Um, punishing Fire it does two damage to any target. Yeah. Um, player. Yeah. Every time an opponent gains life, you may pay one red mana. And then you can get it from your graveyard back into your hand. Yeah. Um, that's the synergy he's playing with Grover the Burn Willows. Yeah. So Grover the Burn Willows taps for colorless mana and um, you can tap it for one red or one green mana and then your opponent gains one life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just tap it, your opponent gains one life, you take the red out of it, you can take Punishing Fire back. So your opponent always gains one life, take Punishing Fire back, shoot to and then shoot two to his yeah. head at that moment, so actually he loses one life. You can do this yeah. every turn. If you have more and more mana, if you have two Punishing Fires in your graveyard, you just let your opponent gain one life, you pay two reds to take the two Punishing Fires back in hand, then you can shoot for four at that moment. Yeah. But, so but it will two. take some turns to, yeah. to finish this off. So there still is a possibility for Seb Van Dun to close this game down. Yeah. But there goes the second Punishing Fire in the graveyard and also a Grove, so there's the Grove of the Burnerless, the second one, you will cast it. So then he has two Groves and two Punishing Fire, so that's three damage every turn. Let's see. Quite chaotic at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> so, yeah, especially yeah. from uh, Ricky's left yeah. side, there is a lot of glare on those cards. Yeah. But we know these are the Taigas, uh, the Grove of the Burn Willows, and the Tespian Stage. That's a copy of the Grove of the Burn Willows. Yeah. So those yeah. are two Taigas, two Taigas, I think, with the two Grove of the Burn Willows on yeah. top of it. And in front, there is. Oh, Seb found a, a fetch land. Okay. Um, so now he has the possibility to do some stuff. He can um, fetch for another basic. We know he has lands in hand. Yeah. From the next turn he can start playing some stuff. If he didn't play the Chalas on 1 earlier, yes, he could play next turn Chalas on 2 and that would close the game down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But he has chosen to, to play um, the Chalas uh, several turns ago. Yeah. So for us it's always easy uh, Maybe somebody to in see, the, but yeah. we see the complete text. So. Maybe somebody in the chat has has an uh, an answer to our question. Why would he play the Chelsea one? We don't see it because we have the deck list in front of us. So <laughs> yeah, only the plays are exploration, gamble, and uh, yeah, a mana bond at that moment. That one, I think, it is very irrelevant. The only reason why Seb did play uh, Chelsea one is that he doesn't play a lot of. Um, Lazy tournaments, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. And I don't know if he really is known um, the capability of the lands. Yeah, 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 indeed, indeed. <laughs> Maybe at that moment, even the punishing fire wasn't visible. Yeah. But still, there are some possibilities. 
Even if I do see it correctly, is there another chalice in Sepp van Doon's hand? I think he would have played it. He has an island and a mox in, in hand, so... No, oh, that's for one, yeah, yeah, that's for one, yeah, indeed. So maybe this, this could swing if he has um, a chalice in hand yeah. at this moment. This could swing from a non-game that he has yeah. at this moment to a win. Yeah, that's right. But if he plays a chalice on two, he can't play his own Dimir Signet. <laughs> yeah, that's not a very big problem, of course. Um. Oh, he has to draw all of his lands. No, he has now a max and two lands. So oh. every non-basic, he can play one and cast a spell every time with it. So and then he just can, if he founds a Karn um, or something... Then he wins at that moment, so... Oh, but now there is a Richardson part on the other side. So now he can tap uh, the basic lens. Uh, he copied the Thespian stage. Uh, yeah, he made the Richardson part of it. Yeah. So now he can tap the two lands yeah. every turn. He's tapping the maze of it. Why is that? That doesn't produce any mana. Yes, it does. It makes one green or one. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it uh, does. It white does. mana yeah. from the Riftstone yeah, that's, portal that's, that's in the graveyard. That's, that's right. Nice. That's right. Two baleful strikes. Baleful strikes. You would just die from the. Punishing fire. Yep. Sixteen. Twenty. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> what is he doing with his life toad? Uh, gaining. So wasteland on the volcanic. Yeah. I think it's still weird to see a deck that's just filled with land yeah. and winning matchups. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange deck. I played it myself as well, yeah. a lens deck. Yeah, but like um, several years ago, mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure if the list of today is exactly the same mm -hmm. as what I played several years ago. I don't think there are a lot of changes. Actually, I can look it up. Ricky is looking what is in his graveyard, so upkeep, two lands, tapping. I think Sepp is on the lock for the rest of the of the game. I um, played it in uh, December of 2015, so, so that's, that's uh, three years ago, Yeah. yes, um, um, and I still have the deck list here, yes, and as I see it, um, it's still playing the same stuff. I played four loans, four gambles, four crop rotations, four punishing fires, four explorations, one mana bonds, four mox diamonds, um, one tabernacle, four dark depths, one glacial chasm, four grove of the burn willows, three maze of its, one riftstone porter, four riftstone ports. So <laughs> it's just the same deck. It, it, it's ex like exactly <laughs> the same yeah. deck as um, what. The lens deck was playing three years ago. Yeah. Only the sideboard it changed a little bit, not that much. That uh, time I played just four Sphere of Resistance, three Chalices. Okay. But I didn't play the Chokes. At that time I played the uh, Crozen Grip uh, okay. at sideboard. Yeah. But the reason is because um, then um, the Miracles, the miracles the, yeah, you had a counterbalance <laughs> stop interaction at that moment. Now we don't have the counterbalance stop, so the Crozen Grip Oops. is a. Uh, less relevant uh, yeah. in the sideboard at this moment so but actually after three years yes. of uh, lands deck. it's like for 95 percent <laughs> still exactly the same deck yeah, if you then see to do grixes and all the other yeah. aggro control decks uh, there are some interaction uh, yeah yeah changes. some 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 changes in the deck at yeah. least but the lens deck is just for three years over and over yeah. completely the same deck
it only increased in value. If you look yeah, at the tabernacle three years ago and the price of a tabernacle today. Yeah, like three years ago a tabernacle, uh, it was like 320 euros something to huh. 400 euros. An, today an English one. An English one, one, yeah. yeah. Yes, today we're talking about two. 2000, yeah. 2000 to 2500 euros, something like that. I uh, I sold my Tower of Knuckle, it was an Italian one, yesterday for 1100 euros. Yeah. Okay. So, so well, there are some prices of uh, cards that have yeah. spiked the last years very hard. Um, so, what happened now? Um, like you said, he found the Ghost Quarter and now he's Ghost Quartering Seb's um, basic lands. Yeah. At this moment, we see the last lands are in play. He had only two swamps, two islands, two islands already in, in the, the graveyard, graveyard. two yeah. swamps in play. So from now on, it's just every turn Ghost Quarter, yeah. and Sep will realize very quickly play. the game is over. Yeah. At this moment, it's probably better to just take everything together and say yeah. it's over. Yeah. Okay, thank you, I played one. Um, ensnaring bridge. I played one <laughs> shell as a one Bayful Strix. <laughs> and you played tons of stuff and a lot of lands. With the mana bond, you can play two ghost carters a turn. So, uh, with an exploration, yes, he can. Exploration, yeah. I'm not really sure um, Why where uh, Seb Van Doon is waiting for. Maybe yeah. he just wants some extra information. information As yeah. I said, he's not um, well known uh, from. Uh, he, he doesn't really know the lands back. Yeah. Um, so maybe he just wants to wait and have every information from the deck. What comes out of his deck what do I really need to cyborg in yeah maybe there are still some cards that he didn't see like um, tabernacle glacial mm. chasm all those cards I don't think they they're still on his hand from the beginning mm. of the game or something I believe not so I think he's just waiting to see yeah. what the deck is playing by now he should know yeah. how it works He's taking maybe uh, almost uh, 15 damage from the... And he's going to 7 yep. yeah. So as I said before, not the most interesting game no. to see. We only see two things. We see Drago <laughs> on one yeah. side and on the other side you see Dredge Loam play. Loam play yeah. a lot of lands and one turn I go Quarter land of you. I yeah. do um, some uh, Grove of the Burn Roll shenanigans. I do yeah. three damage to you. Yeah. It will take three turns and then it's over. <laughs> yeah, it is. Another Tespian stage. So, and I go. Okay, now it's Seth Van Scoops up down. So, maybe while these players are sideboarding after their um, first game, let's switch to our backup table yep. and see what these players are playing. Maybe it's a little bit interesting. Um, here on the left side, we see a player, he's playing the Mono red version yeah. of a sneak attack and through the bridge. Yeah. Um, did you really have a first turn City of Traitors pitch, Simeon Spirit Guide, cast Seating Song, sneak attack, pay one red, Crystal Brands. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what <laughs> turn one is in Legacy. Okay. Then he did draw a lot of cards from the Crystal Brands pitching. Yep. Yeah. Now he's. And a blood moon. And a blood moon. I have 
haven't seen what the other player is playing. Oh, Eastlands. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. What, what deck he's playing. Yeah, of course. We didn't see any card yet. Yeah. But I, I'm not really sure if there is a Grizzlebrand on the table that already attacked. We see the player on the right side. Um, they're both at 13. Uh, um, so the player on the left side, he drew 7 cards for 7 life. Yeah. Oh, he drew Sorcerer. 14 cards. Sorcerer Spyglass. Oh, on the right side, it is um, our own Mish. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it on his, uh, on his head. I'm, I'm, I don't know what he's playing. I don't know uh, what deck he yeah. was playing today. Wasteland and... Uh, um, a soul Land. It's the Ancient Tomb. City of Traitors. City of Traitors, yeah. And a Spyglass, so maybe he's on Steel Stompy or something. Maybe. Not sure. So probably the source of Spyglass. Uh, he would have said sneak attack like probably. probably. Yeah. Maybe the scud bring some extra out. If, yeah. if you go first on Grizzlebrand, you think yeah. it's all over? Yeah, true. Oh, he's uh, playing uh, Eldrazi. Eldrazi, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, I thought there was a true the Breach in the hand of the sneak attack player. That's possible. Then I, at this moment, he's one mana short to cast it. Yeah. Oh, and the player on the right side, he has four mana, and he can't bring in any Eldrazi's, because he has no colorless mana, probably. With the Blood Moon, they're yeah, all mountains yeah. for the top knots here. A Blight Steel Colossus from True Okay, Bridge. that's game. Yeah, <laughs> that's game, yeah. That's game. I think it's 2-0, because they... Yeah, indeed, they, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Shake it out. Uh, those are two um, very... Um, mm -hmm. Fast decks against yeah. it, uh, against each other. Eldrazi is as well a turn four to five deck. It could yeah. win easily in yeah. turn four to five. Maybe they play three games. Um, the other players uh, are finished sideboarding at this yeah. moment. They're shuffling the other players' deck, and they're already ready to draw their starter hands for the second game. Yeah. Um, Step van Dorn um, can start. Yeah, yeah. he's on the, this game. He's on the play. Hopefully now we can see a better match than uh, the first one. That uh, Ricky Buntix won with Lens. Uh, it was a very good game from yeah, uh, yeah. Ricky Buntix. Of course, yeah. it's what Lens do. <laughs> For uh, Step van Dorn, was a bit of an off game. Yeah. yeah, if you can't play anything. So and the mulligan for Ricky Buntix. Um, it's the second time in a row we have uh, Ricky on our stream table. Um, we saw him mulligan aggressively as well. Maybe yeah. now he had just a, a very bad hand, only lands or, yeah. or no land. No lands would be very strange. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> it, it is possible, it is possible. Okay, yeah. okay. So, or maybe he's mulliganing against something. Um, in the last game we saw him bringing in two chokes. Against uh, Lars with his uh, end deck. Um, this time we saw some blue um, on uh, Seth van Dorn's side, as those will be brought in as well, probably. Do you think that Ricky is uh, aware of what Seth is playing? I have no idea, I don't think so. I don't think no. so as well. No, no we only saw There's a beautiful Strix, Mox Diamond, Diamond, Chalice, and, uh, and Snaring Bridge. Which I, I can't believe you he can knows know. what uh, so Seth Van Dorn yeah. is playing at this moment. But he saw a lot of blue, so he's still bringing choke at that moment. Of course. So about the last game uh, in round 3, um, the end player, where I talked about why he didn't uh, went for the line yeah. diamond, yeah. Uh, for, to go for that line. I talked with uh, Lars yeah. Bone in the, in the break we had. Yeah. And uh, he said exactly the same thing as I said. He said, indeed, the obvious kill. way uh, would be to go for Lion's Eye Diamond, um, crack that for red mana, go to Past in Flames, and uh, have a very clear line in the graveyard. Yeah. But 
in the first round. He played against the Lens player as well. He did take that line, line and his opponent had surgical extraction <laughs> in hand. So, um, Learning the hard yeah, way. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, he, so, therefore, he was yeah. a little bit afraid of um, um, Doing going in the same yeah. trap uh, yeah. Yeah. over and over again. So he did take um, not the safe route to go over at Nalsium, but he, he told me um, there were so many cards. The, the big expensive cards were yes. already in the graveyard at that moment. Okay. He had so many um, outs. outs to find some Lotus Petals, some mana yeah. generation spells. He was 100% sure. Eh, well, you're, you're never 100% sure yeah. at Nauseam, but he was really sure he could win over at Nauseam. Okay. And that's the reason why he did take that line. Yeah. So, so well, now we see yeah. um, a Blood Moon. Yeah. Turn one. Uh, turn no, two. Turn two. two Blood Moon. Blood Moon. On a Seb van Dunn side. He has two in his sideboard, so that's... Um, okay, I just want to say that Dark Depths doesn't come into play with any counters on it at no. this moment. But he does know it as well. Blood Moon is a very good card against Lance. <laughs> um, has the Lance player removal? For the Blood Moon? Corrosion Grip, uh, it's a uh, destroy um, target. Oh, it, it does play the four Corrosion, corrosion grip. Grips. Yeah. Oh, I, I just talked about my list yeah. several years ago that he, yeah. that, uh, he doesn't play Corrosion, yeah. corrosion Grip anymore. He does. he does play it. So, four times, yeah. if he founds a forest, he has a Corrosion Grip in hand. He can Corrosion Grip the Blood Moon at that moment. He wins. Uh, then he gets a, a 20-20... Forest. Yeah, he only has one forest, forest in his deck, yeah. but he has um, a lot of red mana. He plays gamble, mm -hmm. so he can gamble for his forest. Yeah, and hope that it doesn't get picked at random. If it yeah. would be picked yeah. at random at that yeah. moment, that would be very. So, but now um, we see the claws on the battlefield as well, next to the blood moon. The claws. We say the claws. It's a ensnaring bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, that on the. The masterpieces that are to class. Okay, didn't know so that. So now uh, Sep has the Karn, of, uh, yeah. the Dominaria one, mm -hmm. um, on the battlefield for four mana, um, for plus one. Um, you can exile the top two cards. Your opponent can choose one uh, um, that goes to the hand, and the other one stays exiled with some kind of counter on it, mm -hmm. and for minus. Two, you can create a creature, what uh, okay. Seb just did, and the creature is um, equally as big as the number of artifacts you have on the battlefield. Okay. So he has the creature itself and the ensnaring bridge, so at this moment the creature is a 2-2 creature. Mm -hmm. um, this could kill very quickly. Yeah, very right? you can, he's directly making another one, so yeah. now they're both 3-3 three, three creatures, he can, yeah. can attack with one. This is like a 3 turn clock at this moment. So that's one thing, um, one way to win. Uh, I've played against Sep against this deck, and he can, uh, with Tesseret, he can make all his artifacts. Yeah, indeed. 5-5 uh, five, five creatures, five, I believe. Five creatures, yeah. so then it's an instant win. Yeah, yeah. So this is the plus ability. Two cards, one stays aside with some kind of counter on it. One okay. goes to the hand. And one goes to the hand. There you have it. A mountain. Yeah. An expensive mountain. Very expensive mountain. So minus it's six. It's eleven. So it's a two turn clock. Maybe if he can Put another artifact into play. Three. Then it's still a two turn clock, so. Yeah. yeah, but if he had an artifact in, in hand, he could have played the artifact, then minus two from the Karn, so that would be two. Yeah, depending oh, on yes, the yes, number yes. of cards he had yeah. in hand at this yeah. moment, indeed. I don't know what the masterpiece was, the second one. This one? Is it a Crucible of Worlds? This is, I, I believe it's a crucible oh, for us. Okay. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I think this is a crucible. 
why don't they play just a normal card? <laughs> All right. Um, the game two was um, a lot more aggressive yeah. from uh, Seth Van Dorn's side. Yeah. Um, he could um, bring in some spells this turn. And um, the other thing is true for Ricky uh, Buntings at this moment. Mm -hmm. He had an off game. He, has, yeah, he only yeah. had mountains, he couldn't cast anything. Yeah, that was. Um, the he had everything on the battlefield. He yeah. failed to find a forest to uh, mm -hmm. start resolving some stuff, to find a solution. So actually, the only thing he could do at that moment was dropping a land, pause a turn, dropping a land, pause a turn, all over over again. While the construct tokens from Seth Van Dunn were hitting very hard yeah. on a very short time. So both players are looking to their sideboard again. Yeah, but that's that's why you have your sideboard. And and Sepp had on turn two, he had a Blood Moon. And that's what you want to do. Uh, finding those sideboard cards uh, at the right moment. So. Yeah. so, but now for Ricky, it's maybe a little bit more clear against what he's playing at this moment. Still not 100% because nope. we didn't see any top turn, no Tesseract, yeah. no... Uh, probably still has some yeah. questions about yeah. what no. is uh, Seb van Dunn playing at this moment. He's sideboarding again, so... But I believe Crows and Grips in a sideboard are the best cards to bring in. Yeah. And after game one he saw some artifacts, mm -hmm. so he already brought those in. Uh, then he has um, Chalice, Sphere of Resistance, Ancient Tomb, Tireless Triggers and Choke. Um, the blue, um, the islands he did see as well, yeah. so I believe after game one the islands came in. And uh, the underground sea and... Yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an island as well. Yeah. yeah. So those came in, so I'm not pretty sure what he is boarding an extra. Maybe we can see what he's taking out. I think he, he brought in again some crop rotations. Yeah. Um, I, I think I saw a crop rotation um, just to find uh, a mountain, uh, a forest, um, if a blood moon would resolve. Mm -hmm. And maybe there is a, a game plan on the draw play. Now he's on the play. And yeah. with the crop rotation, he can assemble his lands um, as fast as possible to make a kill and to lock down uh, his opponent. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a little... And there we just heard there are still 10 minutes left in this ten round. So yep. uh, already 40 minutes have passed. So I will start the clock at this moment here. So now we see a clock counting up. <laughs> yeah. From so zero here, to ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes remaining. When uh, when you are ten minutes in our clock, um, it's a time and around. Yeah. Um, what do we see? We see a lot of lands on the left side. I think the second card is an exploration. Yeah. Sep. It's very hard to see. I think it's a basic swamp or island, a volcanic okay. island. I can't see any of the other cards. Yeah. We see the grove of the burn willows. Um, a tiger maybe, shelter ticket, if I'm correct. Pre-game effect. Oh, pre-game effect, effect Leyline of the Void. That's very good yeah. against the yeah. uh, <laughs> Ricky Buntix yeah. tag. So, but as I said, he has Taiga, he has Exploration, Crow of the Burrows, he keeps his Wastelands in hand. So I was thinking of which land he's playing. It's a fetch. In the chat room, um, someone says, doesn't come creeping tarpet, creeping tarpet tapped into the battlefield met Blood Moon. No, it doesn't. No. Um, it did, um, uh, like we say, uh, a year ago. It uh, really did come into play tapped. 
but there was um, several months ago I don't know one exactly there was a rule change in uh, magic and it means now I, I think it was with the release of blood sun when uh, uh, blood, blood sun, sun was uh, released I think that was the same moment there was a, a rule change and now of the moment they enter the battlefield there are a mountain that means creeping tarpet doesn't come into play tapped that means shock lands yeah, do come into play yeah. untapped they don't do any damage to you all those effects disappear they are just mountains yeah so no they do not come into play tapped so there's a top door a top door foundry in play for sap uh, the island was tapped in the upkeep from the resident port so now he has a Topter Foundry. Yeah. This is actually a little bit what this deck should, be. should do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's not uh, the most known card as well, but I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Here you have it, the Topter Foundry. Um, it's one, sacrifice a non-token artifact, create a 1-1 one -one blue Topter artifact creature with flying and you gain one life. And he has a sword of the meat combo. Yeah. This that's was what, what I wanted to explain. Yeah. There is a combo in the deck. So uh Sword of the Meek, maybe I need to, to pop it up on the screen as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, Keep in mind we, we know what Topter Foundry does, does now. So yeah. Sword of the Meek. That's a pretty nice combo. So I think Ricky is thinking here we have the sword of the meek it's yeah. for two mana equipped creature gets plus one plus two that doesn't look very good actually for a two mana equipment equip is two but the bottom line is everything was thus so whenever one one creature comes into play under your control you may return sword of the meek from your graveyard to play then attach it to that creature so from now on Seb, the only thing he wants to do is just Pay one mana, sacrifice Sword of the Meek into Top Foundry, create a 1-1 one, one token, then Sword of the Meek is on that moment in his graveyard, because Trigger. it's a cost yeah. uh, of um, uh, Top Foundry. Foundry. So the creature comes then into play, yeah. Sword of the Meek triggers, it attaches to the 1-1 one, one creature, he pays another mana to sacrifice Sword of the Meek, and he starts to creating yeah. for every mana he's making a 1-1 one, one flying creature and gains one life every time he does it yeah so now the recent parts are useless as well at this moment he can create a lot of flyers so if ricky Buntings has a, a merit lights lights token he has a lot of uh, one one creatures that can jump block it yeah so this doesn't look very bad Um, so in his upkeep he tapped an island? Yeah, with the uh, resident port. And... Okay, did I miss anything? Why didn't Sep then just tap it for one blue, sacrifice Word of the Meek? Yeah, to make a 1-1 one, one token. At, yeah, with... Plus. That's a wasteland. Yeah. So maybe that is the... Those are the little things uh that sap don't know because he plays not enough legacy magic yeah or maybe just we are missing something of course yeah so we can see Ricky Bunting's hand at this moment, but he has to do it with every draw he has because his graveyard is useless um, yeah. due to the ley line. Okay, so now he. Yeah. Now he's doing the combo. So sack it for top to foundry. Gets he goes a 1 back one. To 20. Yeah. Gets a 1 1. one. And the equipment. Equipment. Comes to the top to. So it's. Equipped. Yeah. So now it's a 2-3. Yeah, the Topter Foundry deck, Antique Desert, as uh, Seb calls it at this moment, it's not uh, a deck that you see every day in a tournament. No. Uh, 
I dare to bet on it, he's the only player he's playing <laughs> it today as well. So that, that gets attached to it. So he's passing the turn now. Yeah. So this was end of turn on Seb's turn? No. No, it was... Uh, end of the, turn of Ricky. It was in the upkeep from the port trigger from for the wasteland. No, we were at the and, turn indeed. Oh, they're pretty fast. <laughs> So Seb draws an extra card and it takes a 4. Yeah. Um, Seb is on 22. Let's see. Okay, he's taking 4 damage. And Goes Ricky takes the 4 damage indeed. 16. So if Ricky doesn't find an answer pretty quick. Painful strikes. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's a 2-3. Sword of the Meek yeah, gets uh, yeah. attached. He draws a card and that's an extra land. There's a now we can make three more topters at the end of uh, Ricky Bunting's turn. Yeah. And then he can attack for seven for eight. So now he has a two-turn clock. clock. Two-turn clock. So Ricky Bunting really needs to find something yeah. interesting at this moment. Maybe a tabernacle or something. It's not game winning at this moment because Seb can keep some doctors alive. Yeah. Um, but still, it can stall the game maybe for one to two extra turns. He found mm. the gamble. So I'm curious what he's going to get at this moment. He found the gamble. Maybe a frozen grip for the for destroying the top of foundry. But again, but still a response. Yeah. Seb can make three extra tokens. tokens it's yeah. still a two-turn clock. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if it if it changes everything at this uh, changes mm. anything at this moment. You would go for the tabernacle? No, no, no. I, I don't think so. I have no idea what the what the. I, I don't think tabernacle is good enough as well at this mm. moment. So another exploration yes. gone. Maybe now we can see what he got. So all the cards in uh, Ricky Buntik's graveyard are exiled yeah. due to the ley line. This is Pastor. He has the Crozen Grip. He has a Crozen Grip in hand. Yeah. So that's so what he searched for. Gaining some life. And all the tokens. In the upkeep, wait. Ricky says. If he now wants to destroy it with the closing grip, it's a little bit too late. Yeah. Yeah. He can do it at this moment, but why does he want to wait for untap and then destroy it with the closing grip so then he can make some extra tokens at yeah. that moment? I think if you want to do it now, you should have done it in your own turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says no. He's heading for eight. So, Lance, um, no. It's time in a round. Time yeah. in a round. round. Seb van Doorn casts uh, the Claws and Snaring Bridge. So the Crozen Grip Ricky goes on Bundix. the Ley Line of the Fire. On the Ley Line, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Ricky wants to use his Graveyard. So the die is uh, the turn one. But what do we see? We see a Wasteland. Hmm. So what does Seb do with it? Is he creating an extra token? He's not doing anything with the wasteland. No. 
Okay. Really strange. <laughs> yeah. But does Ricky Buntings has any out on this? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Mm -hmm. He's taking the wasteland back. Do we know the other card? He has a crop rotation in hand. Uh, okay, Sepp is just um, floating the floating mana. mana. Okay, he's floating yeah, okay. the mana. Okay. So Sepp van Doon is two mana floating at this yeah. moment. So uh, Ricky Buntings has a crop rotation. But what would he do with it? Tower Nagel, yeah. But still, it, uh, Sep has the clock. So because he can, can keep three creatures alive, one with the sword on it. He can keep the Baleful Strix alive, he can keep one token alive. Um, so that's for four. It's so a, the, the. It's a, still a two turn clock, so on the. Still a two turn clock, yeah. And also. He has turn two and turn four for but attacks. Would, hopefully, for Sepp van Dunn, he doesn't forget to pay for it. Okay, he pays three mana. So, those three he's gonna keep. The attacking, rest is going away. Uh, tapping for uh, attacking for. So, if I'm correct, indeed, this is turn two yeah. of extra turns. So attack for four, takes four. So um, now Ricky needs a top deck. Yeah. And the only thing he can get at this moment a punishing fire is uh, yeah something to kill one of the creatures. Yeah, a punishing fire. So and yeah, he, he only can get a draw out of it. Dredge. I don't think there's any win in it. Oh, there's a the punishing, the punishing fire. So it's going to be a draw. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what Sepp has in hand, but I think chances are very small. Maybe if he has a surgical extraction or something. Turn four. Paying to three for the three creatures. Draw. Quite exciting. Gain one trigger. Punishing fire. Three mana. Careful strikes. Oh, and he's just failing one turn to kill Ricky Bontix. This will end probably in a draw. I don't believe Ricky Bontix has any out to no. win this match. No. And that's what I said. You, now, now you see what happened. Uh, Seb van Dunn in the first match, he played like 20 minutes. Yeah. And after um, round um, three, actually yeah. it was all over yeah. for, for yeah. him. The, the, the and now he's missing today, five minutes. And, and now he's missing like 13 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's just failed turn, one yeah. turn. Uh, he, I, I think yeah. he, he played too long in this uh, first, first uh, uh, match. Yeah, game, yeah, his yeah, first, first game. game of this yep. round, yeah. Yep. There he lost like 10 to 15 minutes. minutes. You you should scoop it down at that moment. Yeah. Uh, and they're going for a draw. So these yep. players are both on a 2-2. Two, two, two wins and two draw and uh, no, uh, two one one.